I have previously complained about the fact that Epson is a shit company for making a shit printer that you can't service when it has its um, ink pad error message. Get your ink pad service message pop up on your printer and it says to contact Epson because there's actually no way for you to do it even if you physically replace the ink pads. Now, I've also previously made a video that has you go to a website, download a software, generate a key for $10, and once you have this key, you can reset your ink pad counters. Now, that method works, and over the years that I've had that video up, no one's really complained about, you know, identities getting stolen, but I still think it's a rather shady website, and frankly, you shouldn't even have to pay anything aside from say replacing the actual physical ink pad and today I'm happy to report there is a free method there is a user on github who has posted basically an open source software where you can manually go in and reset your ink pad counter that user's name is Urkama I don't know how to pronounce it but a great big thank you to him or her and I don't know of any means to contact this person, but if you are them and you want me to like put some kind of donation button or anything like that in the description, please do so. Um, my email is on my YouTube channel. In the video where I talk about how to reset the ink pad counter with that online utility with the $10, I actually put all these instructions in a comment and people have commented that it worked just fine. And so now I'm making a video about this. To be thorough and so you don't have to click between different videos, here's briefly how to replace the ink pad on at least my particular printer, the Epson EcoTank ET2550, which I no longer even have. Go to the back of the printer, undo two Phillips screws, remove the plastic cover, and now from the underside of the printer, and make sure you don't flip it upside down or else ink will probably go everywhere. Go from the underside of the printer, uh, undo the clips on the bottom of the this plastic pad and try not to break the clips like I did. Remove the tray and that's where the ink pads are. From here, like I suggested, just replace it with new ones. It's infinitely easier to do so and toss the old ones. It's a bit of a funny puzzle to put all the pads back in their proper location. Here's me doing it, and here's what it looks like as a final product. Replace the tray, snap it back into place, put the plastic cover back on, and replace the two Phillips screws. If you did break some clips, just use some duct tape or something to keep it in place. Anyways, without further ado though, this method is a little bit more involved than the last method I talked about because it involves going to GitHub, installing Python, all kinds of things, but I will walk you through it. It's fairly straightforward. Let's get started. And the first thing you're going to want to do is go to gitforwindows.org. That's G-I-T. Git is just some kind of repository where, you know, a lot of software engineers just do, um, you know, release tracking, upload their open source software, that sort of thing, and download the latest Git SCM, save it, and then install it. When you click on the installation file, you know, go through the whole options menu and don't change any of the settings. Just use all default settings. I don't even know what any of this stuff is. It doesn't matter. Just click next, next, next until it finally installs. Once that is done, the next thing you're going to want to do is go to python.org slash downloads and download the latest Python. And once you have it, right click on it and run it as, as an administrator um, because I like to put it under uh, C slash program files and in order to do that you need administrative privileges. But you can install it wherever you like but just for the purposes of this video, just so you can follow my instructions, this is the easiest thing to do. So C slash program files slash Python. Once that's installed, the next thing you're going to want to do is go to the following link, and it's a really long one, so again, I didn't even mention this, but every link that I talk about, I'm going to put in the description so that you don't have to like go hunting, but I am going to spell them out just, you know, so that's all neatly contained in this video, and yes, I am fully aware of how futile and silly it is to put links in a video that may change at some point in the future, but I'm going to do it anyways. So. This, the following link is https semicolon slash slash github.com slash urkama with a capital I slash 
Epson underscore print underscore C O N F slash blob slash main slash requirements dot text. When you go there, that'll take you to GitHub and you're going to want to download this text file. The download button is to the right on the right hand side of the screen next to the raw button and you press on that and I'm just going to create a folder called Epson on my C drive if I ever figure out how to type. Save it there. And now the next thing you're going to want to do is actually run command prompt in administrative mode. Now, I don't know how to do this on the abomination that is Windows 11, but on Windows 10, you can just uh, go to your little search bar here, type CMD, it'll pop up and then right click on it and press run as administrator. Once you do that, it'll default you to system 32. If you type CD and dot dot, that'll get you out to the top level folder so do that twice and you will be on the C drive if for some reason it defaults you to something else just uh, type C semicolon and it will take you to that drive so now we're gonna type CD Epson that's gonna take us to the Epson folder and if you type the DIR command and press enter that's going to tell us exactly what's in inside of this folder and we can see here indeed there is the requirements.txt file that we downloaded earlier. The next thing we're going to do is type a command which is git space clone space and this address https semicolon slash slash github.com slash urkama slash epson underscore print underscore conf. And what that is going to do I believe is just literally going to copy and paste the entire contents of this folder online and it's going to put it right onto your C slash Epson drive. Once it's done, it'll tell you it is done. And if you type DIR, you will see that a new folder has been created. Epson underscore print dot CONF. You can go there by typing CD Epson underscore print underscore CONF. Now we're going to type another command. We're going to type PY space dash M space PIP space install space dash R space requirements dot txt and it's gonna do a whole bunch of things I think basically there's uh, a bunch of dependencies and libraries inside that requirements txt and as it's on uh, installing it you're gonna feel like hacker man command prompt is gonna do some stuff and it's gonna look really cool either way once it is done you're going to want to go to github.com slash urkama slash epson underscore print underscore underscore conf slash releases and you're going to want to download the zip file there epson epson underscore print underscore conf dot zip just click on it and save it to the same folder um, which we just created under epson and epson print conf and unpack it there. If for some reason your Windows doesn't have anything that can do um, zip files, just download WinRAR, download WinZip. Um, either of those will work just fine. Either way, extract the contents of that zip file into that folder and you're gonna see now that you have a new file that you can double click on. That's epsonprintconf.exe. So you run that file Windows is going to be upset. It's going to say, Windows protected your PC from <laughs> you trying to fix your printer. Just press more info and run anyway. You are a hacker man. The tool will load. And from here, you can select your printer. And there is a long list of printers you can choose from. The EP series, XP series, pretty much... I don't know if that's every printer Epson has ever made, but it's a big list. You will press detect printers, and then you will press reset waste ink levels once that is done. Now, I don't have the actual printer anymore, but I'm making this video just to help out. And that should that should do it. That should be all. And now, you know, so long as you replace your ink pads physically or not, it's really up to you, but you probably should. Your printer should be back in business. I hope this has been helpful. I hope I have saved your printer from being thrown into the ocean. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, or even consider donating to the channel. Until next time, thank you for watching.